All right, bud. Good morning. Morning. What time is it? It's bright and early, probably like 4.15 in the morning, and it is freezing outside, so I am layering up. We are gonna make our way halfway towards Norfolk today, so we've got a 12-hour passage ahead of us, and we're leaving so early because we want to get there before sunset. It's gonna be cold, maybe windy. You're looking a bit chilly there, buddy. I'm very cold. We're Worried. cold weather wimps, okay? <laughs> Moments like this when we're coming in at night, I feel alive, you know? So I'm just looking at the charts and it's saying, danger, unexploded bombs and shells. Okay, so over here is the Norfolk Naval Station, and it's the largest naval station in the world. I'm Desiree. And I'm Jordan. And this is Captain Oso, the little dude. Seven years ago, we bought a super neglected, really small sailboat that we called Atticus with the dream of seeing the world. Over the next seven years, we spent a lot of time fixing up Atticus. But we also did boat work for money in Mexico, <laughs> traded lobster for rum in Cuba, and lived off grid in Panama during the pandemic. Recently, we upgraded to our dream sailboat, Atticus 2, and we're currently exploring the Chesapeake Bay on our way to North Carolina, where we hope to wrap up our boat projects before sailing for the Caribbean. Just a couple of newbie cold weather sailors. It's not too bad with all my gear. I can't actually tell if it's cold or not. How are we looking? Um, we're good here. We're getting a little close. I feel like electric right now. It's something about the cold, still air, the stars, the horizon, like starting to get colors on it. It just feels so kind of magical. <laughs> you can see my breath, buddy. There you go. Crazy. We're not in Kansas anymore. See that channel marker? Yeah, I see it. Don't hit it. Thanks, Captain. <laughs> hey, bud, when can I go play with those? So if we were both up here while it's dark, if you don't mind. You could go nuzzle Oso in like an hour. Ah! I learned a new term the other day. I was trying to figure out what time twilight is. Well, there's a couple different kinds of twilight. There's civil twilight, which is like normal twilight for people ashore. But then there's nautical twilight, and nautical twilight is earlier because when you're out on the water, there's so little to obstruct the light that you can see a lot earlier with even less light. I thought that was kind of cool. I think right now it's probably nautical twilight. You're looking a bit chilly there, buddy. I'm very cold. Can't hear you, bud. It's cold. <laughs> I'm like a turtle. I'm out. sailing so yeah we've made it out of the eastern bay and into the chesapeake and we're starting to make our way south there's like 13 knots of wind perfect day to do some sailing and some protected water Well, things are getting 
getting a little bit sporty out here. And now we're really just pounding into like, you know, 16 knots of wind and we're just going straight into it. So this is just real slow going. We've got a little bit of steep chop that we're just kind of banging right into. So we're heading to Smith Creek. Uh, it's a small creek off of the Potomac River. I had wanted to get in before dark, which is why we left so early this morning, but it looks like that's probably not gonna happen because this is slowing our progress so much. We're gonna keep hacking into this chop and we'll be there in just a couple hours. the day. It was nuzzly, cold, um, but effective. So we are almost to our anchorage and I'm excited because one of the reasons we're actually rushing to get down to Norfolk is because my brother is flying home uh, from Germany. So it's been a long time since I've seen him. So I'm going to try to jump on a plane in Norfolk uh, to see my brother and my family for like four days. Sorry, bud, for making us sail on a schedule. I know that's not the best thing to do, but um, it's working so far, knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, today was great. Yeah, today was beautiful. How was your sail? Yeah, mine was good. It was cold. Still getting used to the cold factor. Not as bad as I had was We're worried. We're cold weather wimps, okay? <laughs> Once we're in this bay, it's pretty straightforward. We just gotta stay in the middle for the most part. Okay. But there's kind of a dog leg to get in. Look for the red, the green, and then the next red. Okay. Know where they are, point them out to me, keep an eye on them. And then other than that, look out for uh, crab pots. Is that a boat? It's a fishing boat. See a real bright white light? Oh, quick, run down and turn the lights on. <laughs> Sorry, I totally forgot about that. Me too. <laughs> yeah, so uh, bow light and running lights. Yeah, there's a crab pot. Hard to start Can you not see him before that? No. Good news is that uh, I can see our channel markers. I think now that we're kind of in the main channel, there's less crab pots. And I think Desiree's kind of got the hang of looking dead ahead of us rather than looking side to side. It's tough for her because with that spotlight beam, you know, she just can't see all that far. But we're approaching the narrowest part of this pass. We're about to take a left around this green here. It's real straightforward. I read a lot of reviews on uh, Active Captain it's saying that the charts are accurate and the lights are good and markers are good. So I have a lot of confidence, but you know, where the rubber meets the road is I see a flashing green, a flashing red, and then just blackness and that's it. Turn to starboard. 
thank you. I'm gonna turn a lot, so keep an eye to starboard. Okay, we're out of the sketchiest part, so that's good. You see that red flashing light up ahead? We just gotta keep that to starboard and that's it. All right, it's a lot more calm back here. I haven't seen any crab pots for a while. Moments like this when we're coming in at night and it's an unknown anchorage and maybe there are crab pots and maybe there's like fish structures. On the one hand, it's really stressful and I can't wait for it to be over. And on the other hand, I kind of get this like rush of adrenaline and I feel kind of invigorated um, and alive, you know? It's like, all right, <laughs> our safety is in our own hands. Let's do this. <laughs> We're not going all the way through tonight because we got some really strong winds coming through tomorrow. We're gonna hang here, wait for the strong winds to pass us by, and then take off the next the next day. Woo! <sighs> all right, we did it. Welcome inside, buddy. It's nice I and know. cozy. Right? Oh, so it's cozy, isn't it? It's so cozy. What <laughs> do you want? I think it's playtime. <laughs> all right, buddy. I will play with you. Just let me get undressed here. <laughs> I'm burning up. So, go get your toy. Yes, good boy. Sit. Sit. Good. Spin. Yes. Down. Good boy. Go get it. <laughs> All right, time for a hot shower. This is gonna be awesome. Oh yeah. <sighs> Thanks, buddy. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. All right, bud. What's the plan today? Today is a work day. We're just hunkering down in this really cozy little anchorage. It is so cold outside though. Also went out there and was like, okay, let me back in. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gotta be ahead on assembling our footage because um, I'm gonna be flying home. So I'm basically just trying to stay ahead of Jordan with all our footage. Play. <laughs> oh, oh, oh boy. I'm not sure exactly what time we're gonna leave. I've been looking at the forecast a lot. Boy, come on, turn around, buddy. No one wants to see your butt this really strong wind that we've had all day today is gonna start dying down at some point this evening. For now, I wanna make sure that the boat is just totally ready so that if we do end up leaving at like one in the morning, oh, so, so that if we do end up leaving at like one in the morning, we don't have to do anything when we wake up. We can just get up and go. Good boy, yeah, you, thank you for your help. All right, bud, what are you thinking? Well, I've been doing a lot of thinking today, <laughs> trying to figure out how to get to Norfolk. I started looking at the charts and started reading the Coast Pilots and kind of realized that I really want to get to Norfolk during the day. I was thinking about a night uh, approach and I just kind of stopped liking that idea because there's big Navy ships that go in and out of there. There's big cargo ships. I was a little concerned though because these winds that we had today you know, weren't forecast to calm down until kind of late tonight. But if I look at the observations that you can see on Predict Wind, I can see here's an observation point that's getting 17.5 knots. Here's another one that's getting 17 knots. If it's already down to 17, then I think we're gonna be really good to sail tonight. I think we'll probably leave at about 2 a.m. because that gives us exactly the amount of time that we need to get to Norfolk like right around sunset. I think that that's the plan. Leave at 2 a.m. Have a nice dinner. Watch Netflix. Downton Abbey. It all sound like parents, Tom, but I really would like to help if I can. Okay, 1 a.m. 
I got some sleep. How about you, bud? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I fell asleep, bro. Well, if I had to start editing right now, that would be a big bummer. <laughs> like, I'd be pretty upset about that. But there's something about getting ready to move the boat that being kind of sleepy doesn't phase me all that much. You know, make some decaf coffee so I can sleep again when my watch is up. Get a move on. Four layers on the bottom, four layers on top. I think I'm ready to go. Woo! That got pretty cold up there, bud. Yeah. Not gonna lie. <laughs> it's freezing. My hands are a little bit cold from washing the anchor chain, and so I was holding the flashlight like. <laughs> oh God! All right, well with just the Genoa, we're doing five knots. I mean, I'm happy with that because we're going dead downwind, and I don't want to get the pole out and prevent the main. So we're just gonna live with that for now. Well, nice. This is cozy and nice. So quiet. All right, I'm going down. Okay, night, buddy. Wow, it is super cozy down here. It doesn't even feel like I'm moving at all. Come on, let's go. Okay, let's get in there. You're not ready for bed. You're ready to play, huh? <laughs> well, I got news for you, little buddy. It is 4 a.m. <laughs> so it's time for bed. Okay. Defender, Defender, this is sailing vessel Atticus. Defender, go ahead. Well, Defender, uh, we're a 40 foot sailboat uh, just off your port bow. We're heading south around Smith Point. Just want to make sure you saw us and uh, figure we'd go port to port. Yeah, Roger that. I have you on radar and port to port works. We've got a uh, tugboat that's coming around this point, Smith Point. And Smith Point is kind of like a squeeze, right? Like a lot of traffic wants to go around Smith Point. So because of that, they've created a traffic separation scheme around Smith Point. Well, this tugboat <laughs> just like totally ignored the traffic separation scheme and is like cutting this corner short coming towards us. And so they're kind of forcing us to go real far, like close to the shallows. Seems so unnecessary. There's so much room on that side. There's a traffic separation scheme there for this reason. Not gonna lie, a little frustrating, but it's this kind of thing that makes sailing in high traffic areas at night, like a very engaging activity. I haven't sat down to just like relax for even a minute in the last two hours probably. Norfolk. 
it's funny because I keep hearing like the loud noise of fighter jets and I look around and I can't really see them and then I'll finally spot them and they're really far away. It's just nuts, they're so loud. So we're coming into Norfolk and it's not every day you get to sail by a freaking submarine. Just kind of appeared out of the water, it was really cool. There's a couple of helicopters and airplanes and jets. I can't get over how much traffic there is. USS Harry Truman, the eighth Nimitz class aircraft carrier in the US Navy, launched in 1996 and cost $4.5 billion to make. Okay, so over here is the Norfolk Naval Station. It, Apparently you're supposed to say Norfolk. Nor Norfolk? Yeah. What the Norfolk are you talking about? And it's the largest naval station in the world. 75 ships and 134 aircraft. Pretty amazing to see like just all these giant ships all right next to each other. Norfolk, that's a lot of ships. In addition to all the ships, there's like a giant pipe thing coming out of the water. I assume it's somehow linked with the dredging operations, but yeah, don't want to hit the giant pipe thing. Well, talk about a beautiful sunset. I just feel so on top of the world right now. Jordan and little Oso went for a walk because as soon as we tie up to a dock, Oso just needs land. So while they're gone, I'm gonna pour myself a little bubbly in a can. Oh, there's the little speed demon. Look at the baby, hi. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out this week's episode. I wanted to take a minute to thank our patrons. You guys are amazing and you single-handedly make these videos 100% possible. So thank you so much for all of your support, love, and encouragement. It really means so much to us. And if you're interested in helping to support our videos, you can head over to patreon.com backslash Project Atticus. So I wanted to give a huge shout out to our newest deckhand level patrons, Brian Roche, Todd and Kate Blakeman, Pierre Barbier, Fred Carl, Alex Rowe, Jess Galloway, Mark M, Steve Marr, Ray Hyatt, David Harry, and Jennifer Fox. Thank you again so much for your support and we will see you guys next week.